Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm a physics professor at Cape Breton University. Let's spend a few minutes talking about integrity in problem solving in science and math courses. So what do I mean by a problem? Because I actually mean a wider variety of things than you might think. In a lot of science courses you would have problems where you're given some information and asked to calculate some other things given that information. Here's an example from one of my own courses. But another example would be a mathematical proof. And the key characteristics of a mathematical proof is that you're asked to assume some things or take some definitions and show logically that those assumptions and definitions inevitably lead to some particular conclusion that must be true if the initial assumptions are true. Another example would be writing a computer program. So here's an example that might come up in a biology course. And there are many, many other possibilities, and this is not restricted to science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM courses. For example, in economics courses, you would have problems very similar to these sorts of things. So, to think about integrity in problem solving, let's start by thinking about why we even do problems. Well, how do you learn to score a three-pointer in basketball? Or how do you learn how to play an instrument? Or more relevantly to your courses, how do you learn to design bridges, analyze chemicals, solve differential equations? Well, the answer to all of these is practice, and that's why we work problems. So instructors assign problems to students so that you can practice skills, so you can solidify your understanding of abstract ideas by applying them to real life situations. And in the end, when they mark it and turn it back, they're giving you feedback on your learning. Notice the word that keeps coming up here. This is all about you. And so the solution that you submit must be your own work. Remember what Andy said in the first video on academic integrity. Education is about growth and change. And if you don't do the solution yourself, you're turning down an opportunity to grow. And it's expected that the solution that you submit is your own work. And so if you're honest, it must be. But we should talk about what your own work means, because it doesn't necessarily mean that you should lock yourself in a room and isolate yourself from the world while you work on the problem. Most of the time, students can and should collaborate on homework problems, even though they're submitting their own work. You're going to learn more by giving and receiving help. It's going to be faster. And other students will tend to give you better help than the instructors can. So it's important to realize that there's a difference between collaborating, which is good and will help your learning, versus copying, which is academic misconduct. Now, unfortunately, the line between collaborating and copying isn't a sharp line. It's a fuzzy line. But before I talk about that, let me back up and talk about this most of the time. Because, of course, the instructor may be telling you that you should submit your own solution, but it's okay to talk to other people. Or they may actually be requiring you to work in a group and submit the solutions that your group comes up with. Or they might be telling you to work entirely alone. That's especially true of take-home exams, less common on assignments. So, if it's not clear, then ask. So let's talk about how to avoid this hazy line and stay on the collaborating side of it. It's actually not that hard. There's no harm in talking to each other. And talking usually isn't enough because STEM fields are very visual. But writing and drawing on scrap paper or a whiteboard or some virtual equivalent, that's fine as long as what you're writing and drawing isn't what you're going to hand in and you then go away and do your solution yourself. But never show the work you are going to submit and never look at the work another student is going to submit. And notice it's just as bad to allow someone to copy from you as it is for you to copy from someone else. Now, I hope it goes without saying that this also is even more so if you're copying from a homework help website or something like that. 
Here are some misconceptions that I've heard from students. One is this idea that there's only one correct answer, and so of course their solution will look like their friends. Well, that's not at all true. There may but well only be one correct answer. That's usually true in STEM because the correct answer is the one that agrees with experiment. But that doesn't mean there's only one correct solution. Even if the solutions are all very similar, different people will tend to emphasize different aspects of their solutions if they work independently. And another misconception is this idea that they couldn't improve on the best solution, which must be the one in the solution manual. Now, first of all, there are some pretty terrible solutions in some solution manuals. But besides that, there's no such thing as a best solution. A solution that's good for one reader might be quite poor for another reader. So you can't just choose a single solution that's the best. So I'm going to summarize by connecting the basic principles with the practices. And these principles are largely things that Andy talked about in his video. So education is about growth and change. And that's the point of problems. They are for you to practice and grow. And a key underlying idea in academia is that we give credit where credit is due. We don't take credit for other people's work. And our practices are founded in honesty and truthfulness, and so this is why the solutions you submit must be your own. So stick to these principles and practices, and you'll be working with integrity in solving problems in your science and math courses.